Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. The Imam would say, and the army would stick out his head, and he would give me the thumbs up. So to say, you have my support. would go up or would go to the side. If it went to the side, I knew I would, I would need to tweak opera of upper at the key. But it means I can unfat, I was taught. Wow, it is amazing for me to be able to tell and share these stories with you. Imam Rashad, again, Ya Allah, may Allah grant him the Jannah. Later on, he used to sit in the far end on a chair because of his health. And after the final du'a, after everybody would stand up and would disperse from the masjid, Imam would come from the bathroom and his sleeves would be rolled up because he would go take a fresh wudu to make an extra pair of, of sunnah salah. But not before he told me, Beautiful people, beautiful character with great responsibilities at the mosque, in the community, but still taking the time to share the wisdom with me. Ya Allah, shukriya. As a growing boy, I was fortunate enough to witness many changes in the masjid. Musallis came and went, imamat came and went, speakers. But what was ever present to me was the feeling and that ever-living presence of imam. And I'm speaking about imam. Abdullah Harun. I wasn't fortunate enough to meet him, but I am fortunate enough to say that my uncles, as well as my father, received of his tuition as they were growing up as youngsters. Imam was always held in high esteem in our family and in our household. And being able to sit in Stegman Road from a youngster, and it has gone on now to 30 years that I have been present at Stegman Road Mosque, there is not a night that go past. I thank Allah for granting me the opportunity to share a spot where Imam could have stood. 
Great people, she had the member, yet Stegman wrote, including Imam Sepp David. And many people, when they speak about Stegman Road, they would remember Imam Sepp David. So too do I, as a young boy, attending Stegman Road Mosque for Eid Salah. Eid Salah would, would be followed by Slaging the Skarpe Eid al 80 to 150 sheep would be slaughtered at Stegman Road. The mosque would be full and you'd be sure to get amazing people. Buta Galan, Uncle Tiki Galan, Buta Majid Galan, and all of his kids, and many, many more. I would sit, stand in front of the holes, and uh, Imam Amanullah would say, Takbir! Uncle Amadi and Uncle Brahim, my mommy's cousins, Wali, they would get me off the masjid. They would give me two slavats. One I would keep, and one I would take straight home to my mommy. And I still do it today, but just the one my wife takes out of my pocket. <laughs> As they fool me, then create a slavat. I don't know if you knew. Leila Tukadar was one of those nights you used to get a slavat, and I used to look forward to it. Now, I told you earlier on, we come from a humble home, big family. So my slavat was important to me. That was my labarang broeksegeel. The day after Leila Tukadar was never school for me. My mommy and I, we used to get into a taxi and we used to go to Salt River. There was a shop called Pals. Nice cheap and quality, but cheap in price. And Alhamdulillah, my kin says recover. Growing up in Lansdowne and having to travel to Stegman Road every evening didn't come very easily. It was very much a challenge. A simple sip of some soup Maybe one some water or a date, and off I would go. Most of the occasions, I would get a lift from uh, Buta Yusuf Hassan Parker, the son of Tahamad Bai. The lights, they say that you see in Stegman Road, Tahamad Bai put in those lights. He was an electrician. Buta Yusuf Hassan Parker, his son, followed in his footsteps and used to pick me up every night in Yorkshire Street with that electrical van. It was blue and it was filled with tools. But I had to squeeze myself in. Later on, the kids from Yorkshire Street also used to jump in. I don't know what cut the quads they caught on in the back shafts over here, but I had to walk straight to the front. It is also very important for me to remember people that have given their life to Stegman Road, leave, leaving the possibility to go to a masjid around the corner, but still holding up the legacy of their fathers and their fathers to come to Stegman Road. So I will never forget Buta Yusuf, the son of uh, Tahamad Bai, and Anti Fati Master Zulla Gesirat, Anti Tima Blacky, may Allah give him the Jannah, inshallah. The years has gone by, and I was fortunate to be a part of the growing of many Imams. And one of those Imams was Sheikh Riyad Walsh, a revert into the Deen of Islam, a servant of Islam to the highest magnitude, may Allah grant that he is able to realize all of his dreams and goals, insha'Allah. Speaking about the groups of kids that used to then trek with me from, Stegman, from uh, Yorkshire Street to Stegman Road, amongst them were Fahim Hassan Parker, Nozi, the son of Ta Yusuf. Then, Dula Fortune, the son of the Fortunes in, in Edison Road. My brother Suleiman, he was the forelupachi of all of these kids. Riyad Khalant, my cousin, and then many more. I want to also take an opportunity to thank these guys for always being a support in my life together with all of my siblings. Many a times they would leave what it is that they were busy with and look for a way for me to do in order for me to get to Stegman Road at night and so forth. Alhamdulillah. To frequent Stegman Road Mosque. It was very, very difficult to divorce or to extract myself from constantly being present to the group areas at. Apartheid is prevalent. Maybe the rules has been abolished. However, it is within our legacy and within our thoughts and with everything that we do. A few years back, I was fortunate enough to coach sport at Stellenbosch University. And for my very, very first session, I, I asked my father to come with me because I knew 
that he was an avid sportsman as well as his father. And when I introduced my dad, after taking the introduction, he went to the car. I don't know, I didn't know at the time what was happening. He, he walked slowly back to the car. And when I got there, there was tears rolling from his eyes. And he said, my son, as your papa must deliver it. That's all I my father was trying to say that my, my grandfather would never even believe that it would be possible for one of his offspring to have a leadership role at an institution such as Stellenbosch University because of the opportunity that they were rid of during, uh, during the time of apartheid. Later on, I became the, the head of sport at Grotteskir High School around the corner from the masjid. My dad said, my kin, as ons net ons gesig gedraai het na die school toe, dan sal ons een klap gekry het. So, it was engraved into my father and his siblings and, and their peers that it was not possible for them to attain higher status, attain education or even mingle with the white people. I live with the heart so because I realized the potential of my father and of the various other individuals and was forcefully removed, let out of various opportunities where they were, would have been able to, to reach their, their true potential and serve humanity to a greater effect. Many sports people came from Claremont who frequented Sechman Road as well. Rushdi Majid, Saeed Majid, these guys, where would they not have been? if it was not for the holding back during the time of apartheid. And there's many more. Alhamdulillah, I was blessed to get married in 2009. And I'm pretty sure if I must ask my wife the date, she will most probably not know. <laughs> I'm the one who remembers these things. So I got married on the 21st of, of March uh, to my beautiful wife, Layla who is the eldest daughter of uh, Haji Faiz, a student of Imam Poni. May Allah give him the Jannah, inshallah. And also of um, Haji Shahida Peterson, Lee Jacob. We have a beautiful son who celebrated his birthday now, the 21st of, of April, Yaqeen. There's a beautiful story that goes with, with us naming Yaqeen, Yaqeen. <laughs> Loving and wanting to see the world, we decided to go to Makkah for Umrah. We then made the niyyah to start uh, classes, Umrah and Hajj classes, by Sheikh Ibrahim Gabriel. A very inspirational talk. He mentioned Yaqeen, and he said that this trip is different to any other trips in the growth of your Yaqeen. And he stopped the talk and he said that if there's anybody in the room that is going to have a child, this is a good name. I think at the time we did not know that Leila was Kamil. <laughs> and um, it wasn't very difficult for us to choose this name. Um, Yakin is very creative. Uh, he naturally knows exactly what it is that he wants and uh, linking very closely to his name, which means certainty. Alhamdulillah, may Allah give him that, um, that he lives up to his potential and so on. I also want to use this opportunity to thank my wife who has been a great support in my life Many people will be able to relate to activities or instances where they have had life-changing moments. For me, it was when I was able to visit the Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's Qabr. And then another amongst a very few others was when I sat, I held my father's hand and I said my nikah, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, I've been forced to travel the world. I can try, I can attempt to, to describe um, and elaborate on the Kaps al Hago, as they may call it. I visited, I have visited in a short space of time, uh, 15 major cities in the world. I always make sure that I stay close to the masjid, and I always try my luck to perhaps perform the Adhan at that masjid. I land on the Thursday so that I am there for Jumu'ah. But I haven't, not because I'm biased, but I haven't heard anything that comes close to to our last year in Cape Town. When I was 19 years old, I visited Morocco 
um, I was fortunate enough to be asked to render a dua or to recite at a banquet. I chose to read uh, Hasbunallah, then one of the duas that we make in Tarawih. The, 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 the guests replied by also rendering one of their duas. It was very straight. It was very straight, monotone. When we were reciting as Capetonians, it blew them away. It blew them away because of our unique style. La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. To elaborate on the snips, it is very difficult because it's not a particular something. It is what it is that we are. Monroe. 
such a special place in my heart because of what it means to the people that has come before. And although our masjid does not have the many musallis that it used to have in yesteryear, I try to give the experience of back then to the now musallis. I close my eyes. I try, I try to hear Papa in the background. Melodious recordings of my uncle Farid Kharan. The second voices of my brothers. And the jawab of the rest of my cousins in seven Yorkshire. But as you grow older, you become aware of your duty as a Mu'azi of becoming present to my purpose as a Mu'azi. Many people, they come to the masjid and they hear the adhan and because it is common practice, they follow the rest of the crowd. Or we tend to mimic the Mu'adhins of Egypt, Medina, a style of Makkah, but we tend to forget that it is not about that karinko or Ulangze Kantrik, but it is more about the purpose. When you get to those lines, Hayya ala falah, Hayya ala al falah, we have the opportunity to call people to success. Because Allah says in those lines, come to the salah, come to the success. But success is not so much in what it is that we do out there in our jobs and so forth. If it was about who it is, what it is that we are doing, we'd be called human doing. But we are human being. And the question is, am I being that servant that Allah has prescribed for me to be on the level that I can be? So, through challenges, we may think at the time, because of our limited wisdom, that it is a calamity. It is perhaps a gift from Allah, that Allah is great. There might be a wisdom in what it is that you are facing. And through putting your trust, your yaqeen in Allah, you will be able to see the fruits of that sacrifices, those trials, those tribulations, in order for you to reach to a point where you are now enjoying what Allah has placed there for you. Concentrate on the positive things. Concentrate on the things that allows you to have fun. Does it make you smile? Does it allow for you to grow in your confidence so that you can be not a better Mu'adzi, but also be a better servant, a better citizen, a better family member? Then just carry on with it, giving the best that you can give, regardless of the circumstances that you might find yourself in. The lack of this, that or the other. Or if there are people that are naysayers. Go for it because it makes you happy. And more so, it allows Allah to smile. Because Allah has given you that invitation to now read the Adhan. For many, many people to come to the Masajid to remember Allah. It will be a miss from me if I did not thank the people that has been there in support of my 30 years as a Mu'adzi. I want to thank my father who has, without him knowing, been a pillar of strength and support and guidance in this particular area of my life. I want to thank my daddy's eldest brother, Uta Usman, to be taken by the hand and to be brought to Stegman Road Masjid as a young boy to fulfill the legacy. I want to thank my mother. When it comes to Ramadan, my mother would phone me and say, Muhammad, Ya Allah, my kind, I must so for you. I can also hear the stem of the Anna Pankarabi and the Anna Ola Paran. The things that she had to go through in making sure that she doesn't hold us back, especially myself. I want to thank my mommy's cousins, all of the valleys, for the love and support. 
from the time that I was sick through my op, when my mom was in, um, in Makkah and having to endure giving birth on Arafat while her son was recovering from a pectinductus or tiriosis operation here in Cape Town. I want to thank my brothers, each and every sibling, at which are my sister, they have a beautiful character. And I thank you, my brother Suleiman, you are a full of strength for all of us. You are always putting yourself aside and your needs aside to make sure that I have what it is that I need to have in order for me to excel. Yusuf and Abdul Aziz, the main inspiration for us, 11, 10 years old, you guys were standing in front of the Mikhrab or in the mihrab performing tarawih. What better examples can we ask for? My uncles, Uncle Ishmael, Uncle Badi, Uncle Mani, Uncle Luna, Uncle Aju, Nature Buddha, Uncle Baba who's not with us anymore, my beloved aunt, Uncle Aisa. Your voices linger on, but also in my heart daily to Uncle Faiza, to Uncle Suraya, and Ikea, Isida. You are a big part of me and the successes that I achieve in every area of my life. And with every sujood that I make, you guys are in my thoughts. For all of my cousins, what a great pleasure it was for me to grow up in your company. And I can only say that it is in your representation that I endeavor to give the best of who I am in everything that I choose to do, Alhamdulillah. If there's anybody that I have missed, obviously I can't go without mentioning the committee and my family at Stegman Road Masjid that sees to the upkeep of the masjid, that makes sure that we are able to live the legacy of Imam Abdullah Harun all of the Musalli, all of our, our Kupa, Shukran, you are doing an amazing job. And it is for me a pleasure that after 30 years, I still feel excited to come to Masjid every night. Shukran. Fatima and Israel, also by a Khurus Vanilla, this is an amazing job you are doing, allowing people to tell these stories because it allows our youth to be able to connect to our forefathers, our uncles, our aunts and the history, the trials and the tribulations that they went through in order for us to have the opportunities that we have right now. So that now we are able to perform what it is that we need to do but remain in the presence of appreciation for what it is they have done in the past. My short term goal right now is to complete my master's degree in sports development and peace, which I wish to attain. As a life coach, I wish to support people to achieve success in various areas of their life. And hopefully, um, I am now inspired by you and what it is that you are doing, Fatima, and hopefully, can take the life coaching work to the masses by. Um, also um, publishing a book or a YouTube channel. The idea is to support as many people as possible to achieve their goals and aspirations by not telling them what to do and what not to do, by seeing where it is that they need support and granting them tools in the areas where they need support so that they are able to help themselves. But I also want to use this opportunity to share some words of encouragement to the greater community, inshallah. Be it that you are eight years old or 18 years old and you aspire to become successful. Each one of us are different. We come from different homes and we have various different aspirations. 
We have different cultures in the different homes that we come from as well. But what is common for all of us is that we all have goals. We want to become somebody. We want to make something of our life. And we want to achieve something that our parents, our family members are proud of. And we want to contribute something to this world. I want to tell you that in the same way that that car needs to be fueled in order to take you to, to your destination, you also need fuel to drive your goals. Regardless of what it is, be it family goals, be it academic goals, be it sporting goals, or in any area of your life, the fuel to your goal is your action. The amount of action that you take will determine how successful you become. The necessary action that will allow for you to achieve your goals, inshallah. Um, Now I just want to know what I must what I must leave. Can I leave my phone here? Can you see it? I don't want. I don't want it to be in the shop. Yeah, this must come out. <laughs> it's just here in case. Are you gonna cut through that five star? Yeah, that's much better. Otherwise I'm gonna forget man. Yes. Have you got four? You must get have photo. Yeah. I must don't I must don't just smile first. Must I speak about my brothers? I want to speak about my brothers and I want to speak about okay, but before that siblings operation and yeah. <laughs> no hatus. Main pot. I'm not talking too long, I'm talking too long. Okay, okay, it's good. It's Musdi. No, it's D. Yeah. No, the old one. Yeah. Can we go for it one at a time? No. Okay. Yo. I want to speak about something before we get there. It doesn't matter, Mosna. No? I want to speak about the various different people in your world. Yeah, yeah, it's fine, it's fine, party. Don't worry, I know we're talking about that. One, two, oh, party maybe. Mukha, yeah, yeah, yeah. They all part of Mukharam, Maulat, yeah, that is right. What else? I can just roll the corner. Okay. Fatima? Fatima? You must just cut, man. I did that. It was a big disturbance. Okay. Your broek is uitgesoot. You have your hempy kry. And maybe a jerky. Hey, lekker time, alhamdulillah. The time is so cool, man. What is next on the pro on the dinner, sir? Who are the questions? Yes, let me speak about that. Yeah, Allah, my people are from. I made that line for kids, man. Huh? No, no. Yeah, that was my first. You can cover that. 
Aí o Bahia já falou, ia, o nosso mola de mim, isto me acabava de ver quieto. Ya Allah, the first time I made that dance, I got it completely wrong. First and foremost, I didn't know you need to have a wudu before you take a dance. Secondly, I said, Ashadu Anla Muhammad Rasulullah. And I was proud. I thought, the stem is right, the carinkel is right, alles moet right, miss. When I came at home, the first thing my daddy said, my kid, call me. And you can imagine, I heard my fortune that I see. But, wait, are you seeing the other people from you now? Yeah. Yeah. You still have to pull them out, buddy. Because I'm going to leave your papa. And your mama's standing in front of you. Look here. Yeah. I'm not going to leave you. I'm going to leave you. Lo para ver las muestras que no son los ¿no? Yeah.